Our Yahweh, do bless your magnificent name. Strengthen us by your words of truth in the magnificent name of Yahshua. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Why do we always have so many people sitting on the west side? It's always been like that, though, ain't it? I'm not, now, don't, y'all always have no condemnation to pass it. Well, I ain't, I'm going to stay where I'm at. All right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Everybody doing all right? Lord to the King. Uh, we're going to learn something here just for a second, all right? Don't know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run through this. I'm going to do a little bit of stating the facts here. Now, I didn't uh, go back and pull up all the references because it would have made a PowerPoint uh, extraordinary long, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually talk about <clears throat> in this word right here. And, uh, of course, you're going to learn something again, and you're going to shake your head. You're going to be like, wow, man, I tell you, how deep does the rabbit hole go, huh? <clears throat> but um, we're going to talk about a word that we often use. Uh, and, and let me say this. Uh, here uh, next week, somewhere along about this time, I'll be uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina for a, a meeting that Mother Bullock and them has uh, set up. Uh, we're getting quite a bit of response for the people in that area. Uh, down there. Also, we have Gathering of the Saints, God's 2015. Uh, some of you have sent your registration forms in, and of course, if you plan on attending, you know, you have the option to pay at the gate and stuff um, if you want to. Uh, but it's October, I um, know no, it's not October, July, August of 12, 13th, and 14th, and 15th. Nah, something like that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but that's when the Gathering of the Saints is. We look forward to seeing you, you, and you here providing that you can't make it also um, if you people have been um, diligent in, in um, stacking silver and stuff it's now time for you to start really truly been time there to start putting food back really food back you should listen to my videos they they, they give you all kind of direction um, and of course we hooked up with Jim and him over there and, and for those you don't have time if you want some storageable food that was stored for 25 years and it's clean, it's kosher. Uh, there's no pig, no swine, no shellfish and all that other stuff and you can go to the website and look at New Manor Foods and order some there if you want. Um, there's a lot going on in this wicked world that we live in, you know what I mean? And at the time the wickedness can be overwhelming but uh, I, I tell you that's the reason why the Most High tells us to come out and we need to come out. Hallelujah. We're going to deal with the word Gentile. All right, the word Gentile. All right, now we're going to go over history here first for a second, okay? Moses was born approximately 1526 B.C. He was educated as an Egyptian prince. He spoke the Shemitic. Notice I say Shemitic. I don't say Semitic. I say Shemitic. Shemitic dialects, which included the Egyptian, Aramaic, Phoenician, Moabite, Moabitic, uh, Sumerian, and the ancient Hebrew, all of which were practically identical. Do you understand? Because all these people were in the same geographical location, all right? Not one Hebrew prophet or apostle ever spoke English. While in exile and dispersion took place, those Hebrew Israelites, uh, which were taken into Babylon, spoke and wrote a new Hebrew. In other words, Moses, he never crossed over to Jordan, all right? So since he didn't cross over to Jordan, his dialect or the Hebrew that he knew uh, was totally different than the people after they had crossed over to Jordan and then uh, this Hebrew language became known as the Hebrew Chaldean. This is after they end up in the Babylonian captivity. Uh, this is why you often see the concordances, Hebrew and the Chaldean, or Chalde dictionary. Uh, today we read the translation of this language, yet it is a dead language. And I'm talking about the ancient Hebrew that Moshe spoke. Nobody on earth is speaking this language. Nobody on earth is actually speaking the Hebrew Chalde. So all these people that fancy themselves and thinking that they can get it right, uh, it's, it's impossible. Uh, we just happen to speak the language we speak today and we can understand, at least we can communicate. 
Uh, nobody in today's world can speak the language. It is assumed people living in modern Israeli speak a form of Hebrew language. Y'all do know that as an assumption, right? Uh, since these people call themselves Jews and they say that they are um, in Israel. All right? Uh, and uh, these are Israeli people, and it is assumed that these people are speaking some form of a Hebrew language, but however, it's simply not the truth. The World Book Encyclopedia states that the 20th century Palestine Jews living in the land of Israeli, I keep saying Israeli because that's what they claim themselves to be, speak the Yiddish language. You ever heard that before? Yiddish language, which grew from a high German and has some words from, watch this geographical location, Hebrew, Polish, Russian, and English languages. See the difference in location. Moses did not know the Hebrew Chaldee language. The original manuscripts were written in the original Shemitic and not Semitic. Semitic language. Y'all know the reason why I do that, right? Because today they like using the Semitic, this portion right here. But the scriptures that we have in front of us uses Semitic. And I think personally the reason why they don't they do that because you know, all the time these people are trying to do everything they can to skew and cover up information. Um, after all, they have educated us in their, their school systems. Um, they've, or let me say, trained us in their school system. And each one of us, whether you like it, understand, believe it or not, we actually think somewhat similar or alike. Now, we may be different in, the, in culture, depending on what nation we may come from and stuff, but we usually pretty much speak pretty much the same and discern the same way until we decide to set ourselves aside and apart and do what the scriptures tell us to do, which is to study. Christ spoke Aramaic. The epistles were probably written in a Greek language. The Hebrew Chaldee manuscripts were copied approximately 400 AD, and the Greek manuscripts are probably 250 AD. For instance, a long time ago, when they used to speak and we read it in our translations today, you know, beware of dogs. We see that and presented to us in English. Is that correct? But the proper meaning is beware of gossipers. Are you following me? So it's about understanding translation and what they're trying to convey. They spoke differently and they understood differently. And what we have to do is bridge the gap and make sure that we try to really truly restore and understand what they understood back then. Because a lot of times we see, or a lot of people put a lot of credit in these translators. I call them translators. I think they could have done a better job than what they uh, presented to us, but the truth is they had an agenda like anybody else, and that's why I go back again. The king or nobody deceived us whatsoever at all. He told us to search. He told us to study. That's what he told us to do. Now, if you're not a man of Yah, you can only go so far anyway because the Spirit is only going to lead you so far. All right, follow me. Uh, it's up to pastors to feed Yah's sheep with knowledge and understanding because he put that burden upon them. Not only did he put that burden on, he put the spirit in him to be able to do it. All right? Handle serpents. You know, in Mark 16, we talk about it all the time, right? The proper translations where the serpents were enemies. They were able to handle enemies. You know, kind of like I do today. You know, there are a lot of people that, you know, we, we've had a great exodus here a few years ago. And I was handling serpents then. And a lot of people didn't realize I was handling serpents because they thought since that I carried on the same way, I dealt with them the same way. Um, they didn't know when I had roadblocks up. They didn't know when I was doing certain things to discourage certain things. They thought things were running long, but their spirit ended up getting frustrated, and then whoop, off they go. Are you following me? It's about patience. Are you following me? It's about having patience and long suffering. You have to be able to endure long in order to see an expected end. The proper comprehension of the word Gentile. Almost everyone today believes that the word Gentile means anyone who is not a Jew. Yeah, we all know that, right? That that's what they teach. Is that true? The actual word Gentile was never in a Hebrew or Greek language. It has its origins, or it originates in the Latin language. Gentile is a derivative of the Latin word gens, which meant nation, heathen, non Hebrew people. Again, Gentiles are derivative of the Latin word gens, which meant nation, heathen, non-Hebrew people. Y'all got that, right? Is that sinking in? 
All right, Gentile was written Gentilius. Gentile is an English spelling for the Latin word Gentilius. The words going, and sometimes you'll see it spelled because the I and the Y is interchangeable, uh, just like the, um, the C and the K is interchangeable when you understand words, okay? But the goi, G-O-I, and ethanos. Goi, those be from the Hebrew, ethanos from the Greek, are used 653 times in the scriptures and only translated as Gentiles, plural, 121 times. If you did not speak the Greek language, you were considered barbarians. So now we understand when we read in the book of Corinthians, about he's, he was a barbarian, or shall he not be a barbarian unto me if he doesn't speak words that I understand? Over in Battle Sheet 10 1, and we're going to go over the first five verses here for understanding purpose or comprehension purpose so that uh, we can read this in context and really truly immerse ourselves in the study of this word right here. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noach Shem, Ham, and Yafet. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Yafet, Gomar, and Magog, and Midial, and Yawan, and Tubal, and Mishael, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomer were Askenaz, Rithphach, and Togomah. All right? And the sons of Yafan was Islas, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodem. By these were the Isles of the what? Gentiles. Divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue and after their families, in their what? Now, the reason why I have these two words highlighted right here is because when you look into the Hebrew, all right, behind those words, two of them, Gentiles and nations, look what happens. Did you notice the word going appeared twice in the same verse? And it's translated once as Gentiles and once as nations. So when you go back and you look at these two words, both of them say it's going. Y'all following? All right. Hebrew 1471 is where it derives from Gentile going, a foreign nation, hence a Gentile. Gentile, or what kind of people are these? A heathen nation and a people. Are you following me? So all the seed of your fat are a heathen nation of people. Now, show you something else in Genesis 12, 1. Now Yahweh has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great what? Now we're going to look at that word behind it, what they're presenting to us, all right? We're going to look at that word, all right? And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Notice, a great what? Nation. Well, when we look behind that word nation, well, do you think that the scriptures will say that he's going to make Abraham a great goy? Because that's what the word is they're presenting to us with this word nation right here. When you look behind that word, if we follow the translation and we look behind the word from the original context, it says, I will make of thee a great goy. Now, Abraham is not a goy. Abraham is a Hebrew. He's not a heathen people. Do y'all get it? If you were to look behind that word, whether it be the Strong's or um, any other coordinates, it makes no difference whatsoever at all. It, it, they all say the same thing. Amazing. That's why self-autonomy and the exercise of that. Are right, you following me? You're not changing scripture. You're just putting order or words in his proper content. And you're easily to discover the agenda of these people and why would they say that? Alright? Because in this instance, 1471 Goy, and this is coming from another source, which says that Gentile is a nation of people, uh, usually non-Hebrew people, descendants of Abraham, Goy nation. See how confusing that is? A Gentile is not a descendant of Abraham. A Goy is not a descendant of Abraham. Are you, fo are you following me? A Gentile is what it is. It's a nation of people, usually of a non-Hebrew people. So he cannot say that I'm going to make of thee a great Goy. Does that make sense? They could have translated proper, properly in the following way. And this is what I come up with. 
I will make of thee a great tribe. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Or they could have said, and I will make of thee a great people since we're dealing with family. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Let's look at another inconsistency here for a second. Better sheet 17.4, Genesis 17.4. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. However, we got something going on again. We know that the book is written to a Hebrew people. Is that right? All right, it's a history of that family and of that people. The confusion is today is because throughout time, you know, people have had an opportunity to skew history, and now everybody just assumes that they are the original of that people. Now, that's not so. All right? Like if you just take myself, my mom, and dad, all y'all didn't come from us. Let's just use it as an example. I, I could have said the elder Donnie and Ija Lee and them. You understand what I mean? All right? You, we, you didn't come from that family. Does that make sense? And, and it's amazing what people have done today. And notice I keep high, highlighting uh, anything that has to do with Goya, Gentile, in green. And of course that word Gentile, when you look behind that word, is Goy, 1471, nation people use it non-Hebrew. 1471, in another uh, concordance to define a foreign nation, his Gentile, Gentile, heathen, nation people. There's no way that that would have been said to Isaac or Abraham. Is that right? Verse 5, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham for a father of many, watch this, heathen, pagan, non-Hebrew people. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense at all, does it? I have made thee. See the pensmanship. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. I, I guess what? You can only imagine what the word nations mean. He said that, now here's the scriptures telling us that Abraham is a Hebrew because he comes from Eber. All right? And, and we know that the Hebrew is not a goy or non-Hebrew people. Is that correct? But now all of a sudden, he's going to make a great goyim out of him. And kings shall come out of thee. Well, kings did come out of it. King Saul, King David. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Uh, we can go on and on and on. Were these all goyims? No, they were not. Were they goys? No. There it is again, the definition of it in the Hebrew 1471. Verse 4. Now, this is the way it should have been or it should have read. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many tribes. Does that make sense? Because at this time, Abraham is only one. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham for a father of many tribes have I made thee. It starts to make more sense though, don't it? Uh, it's more concrete. It's more sound. Another one. Genesis 25, 23. All right, this is Jacob and Esau. Um, passage right here. And Yahweh said unto her, speaking to Rebekah, look what he says. To what? Nations. I have it in green to let you know they're already talking about goys. So would the translation say two goyims or two goys is going to come out of you? Are y'all here? What's wrong with y'all? Huh? Do we need to get up and run around the building? Play some music. Do something get the blood flowing. Or is your mind working and I'm just missing it? That's what it is, right? Yeah, I know blame everything gonna pass down. All right. And Yahweh said unto her, look, two nations are in thy womb. You can only imagine what they were <laughs> that they translated from, right? And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. There was not two goyims in her womb. Rebekah was married to Isaac, who was a Hebrew. And since he were males, these were what? Hebrews. 
Again. Two people. That's the way I will translate it. And Yahweh said unto her, Two people, or two peoples, are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. The one from well, the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Makes more sense, more concrete. You agree, Elias? Yes, sir. The scholar said, yes, sir. Going back. Because we have to make sense of all this. Oh, in Genesis 9, 26, before the table of nations was even presented. And this is the issue today. That the Messianics and a lot of people in this world have today is nobody wants to go back to the table of nations in order to define the origins of people. Genesis 9, 26, and he said, Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of who? Shem. That means he's not the Yahweh Elohim of Ham, nor is he the Yahweh Elohim of Yafat. And Canaan shall be his servant. Yahweh is only the Yah of the Hebrew people. And they're not Ashkenazi. Over in Exodus 3, 18. And they shall hearken to thy voice. And thou shalt come. Thou and the elders of Israel. Unto the king of Egypt. And ye shall say unto him, Yahweh the Elohim of the Hebrews. They had to put that in there. Have met with us. Now think about this. The scriptures teach us, the Torah teaches us that all the gods are appointed to the other nations. All the other mighty ones have been appointed to the other nations. And Yahweh is only the Elohim of the Hebrew people. Are you following me? Now let us go, we beseech thee, three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to Yahweh Elohim. Now the word Gentile is sometimes translated in the English versions as nation, heathen, people. Here's another example of why you have to look behind the words presented in English. Going over to the New Testament, Luke 7, 5, watch this. Y'all remember that this was the centurion that had a servant that was at home sick. All right? And then look what it says. For he loveth our nation. You know the reason why I got it in green, right? Because what are they implying? And he hath built us a synagogue. Why? Because that word nation, when you look behind it, they're using the word G, Greek, 1484, for the word ethnos, meaning a non-Hebrew people. How much sense does that make? Well, it says nation and stuff. Yeah, I understand, but don't uh, Gentiles, a race, a tribe, that is a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Hebrew, non-Jewish, one, I'll put this in here, usually by implication, pagan, Gentile, heathen, nation, people. So was the people then a pagan people if he came to his own? I think not. Again, the translator translated ethnos as nation. Now, are we feeding y'all too much? Are we giving me too much? Does this is disheartening y'all? What you expect? All right. It should have been rendered people as there was no nation of Israel or Judah in existence in Judea at this time. Now, you need to know, in case you don't know, that they have actually redefined um, Judea with the modern day use of the word Palestine. Luke 7, 5, this is where it should have read. For he loveth our people, and he hath built us a synagogue. That's the way it should read. Now, you ain't going to be able to read all that, but that's just another translation of the word or another concordance um, of the word uh, Gentile or ethnos in Greek 1484. All right? And, and some of the things that it says, it says, look at this. In the Old Testament, foreign nations not worshiping the true Elohim, pagans, Gentiles. Paul uses the term for Gentile Christians. Whatever the hell that is. Paul ain't never used that word. But when you've been reared and schooled and trained by this nation right here, they can tell you anything, won't they? And, and they do. All right, what does prophecy say? Let's look at a few, just a few passages of prophecy. We're not going to cover passages. It's, gonna, it's your job to look a little bit before and after, all right? Yes, Yahu says in 6... Uh, 30, 60, 30, 63, I mean, chapter 60, verse 3, the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. In other words, 
these heathen, pagan, non-Hebrew people is going to come to the light of who? The Israelites. Yezekiel 4.13 And Yahweh said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the who? The pagans, the heathens, the Gentiles, the Goyims. Whether I will drive them. Ain't that the truth? Hadn't that taken place? Yezekiel 6.9 And they that escape of you shall remember me among the heathen the non-Hebrew people, the pagan nations. See how it reads now? Whether they shall be carried captives because I am broken with their whorish heart which have departed from me. And with their eyes which go a whoring after their idols. See what got us all in trouble? And look at today how hard it is to get people to put these idols down. Huh? Now you see the reason why the Most High dealt with them so harshly? Why they, oh, I ain't, he ain't going to get these, This generation ain't getting by. If he let us by, it, then he won't be just. Does that make sense? And of course, people want to give you nice smooth words, easy words to get you to believe all this stuff like, like judgment is not coming to us and we're worse off. There's so many idols on the earth now that we probably beat every empire that's ever been in existence. So he's got to judge this, this, this world. Y'all get this? And they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all of their abominations. That's the problem we had today. We had the problem today where we simply don't loathe ourselves. We're like in a apathy. We're like in a state of apathy. We're just existing. That's, that's, that's where the spirit of the Israelites at today. We're in a spirit of slumber. I mean, tell the truth about yourself, ain't you? You're in a spirit of slumber. You just kind of moseying along. Uh oh. Ezekiel 22 15. And I will scatter thee among the boys, non Hebrew people, heathen, and disperse thee in the countries, and I will consume thy filthiness out of thee. Obadiah 1 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, the boys. The non-Hebrew people. Isn't that true? They are greatly despised. Are we not? That all of that is the same word Gentiles. Luke 18.32 For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, Goyims, non-heathen people, the Romans. Now the Roman Catholic Church act like they are the people of Yah. Why would Yah use a pagan pope to be his mouthpiece and spokesperson on this earth? He ain't going to do it. And shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on. So who were the Gentiles of that day then? The Romans. Who will be the Gentiles of today? Americans. We're in America, so we need to talk about America. Luke 21, 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led captive into all heathen, pagan, goyims, ethnos, nations. Because this Gentile or nations does not mean, and I didn't even bother even go into it because it had been even longer. It doesn't mean Hellenist. Because sometimes the word Hellenist is translated as Gentile. And that's what brings about a confusion on people when they start reading the Renewed Covenant because they don't know who is it talking about or what is it talking about or what people is it referring to or not people is referring to. It has to be defined. So he said his people are going to be led into heathen nations, pagan nations. Are you following? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the pagans and the heathens and the non-Hebrew people until the end of times 
of the heathen, the non-Hebrew people, the Goyim, and the Ethnos be fulfilled. In other words, there's a time for all the pagan, heathen, idolatrous nations have on this earth. It has to run for a period of time. All this does. Now, the scriptures and the renewed covenant becomes more concrete. It, it actually becomes more alive. It actually starts to make more sense. Hebrew 8, 13. Look up that word, one of the sons of uh, Gomer, which was Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz, a Yafet. Also a descendant of Ashkenaz, a northern people, perhaps of Bithynia or Britain. Did y'all hear that? Known today as modern day Jewish people. See the imposters? No wonder Revelations 2, 9 and 3, 9 say, I know them who say that they are Yehudims and they are not. And we still can't get it. Who are you talking about? We know who they are. They're right over there. That's all we <laughs> Y'all hear that? Ashkenaz, a northern people, perhaps a Bithynia, Britain, modern day Jewish people. Going back to better sheet, 10-3. The sons of Gomer are who? Ashkenaz. That means Ashkenaz is a heathen, pagan, non-Hebrew people. But guess what? The whole world called them the chosen people. The gig is up. Told you, Satan said he can't beat them, join them. Can't beat them, replace them. <laughs> I'm keying in on the word here. Genesis 10 4, and the sons of Javon. Woo, boy, oh, y'all want. Boy, that is something else right here. I'm supposed to do a study on this, ain't I? Anybody remember? The sons of Yawan. All right? Notice I'm not reading the whole thing because we already know we're going to deal with Yawan here. Hebrew 3120. Yawan, look at this. Check it out. Anonia or Greece. A son of Yafat and grandson of Noah. Greece. Ionia. Ionians. Location of the descendants of Yawan or Yawan. You mean tell me they were way back over in the table of nations? Yeah, all nations were. You just discovered it. So that means the Greeks were pagan, heathen, non-Hebrew, Goyim people. After the Greeks come the Romans. The Romans was in power and in play when Christ was on the earth. Is that true? After the Romans come the Europeans or the Brits. After the Brits come America. So guess who's ruling the earth? The pagan, the non-Hebrew people. The heathens. Mark 10, 33 saying, Behold, this is what Christ says. We go up to Jerusalem, and he is prophesying. And the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. And they shall deliver him to the who? Gentile or the Romans. Now, don't think that the Messiah, when he's prophesying of how he's going to be condemned by his own people, is anything different because that's what our people always did to every prophet. Our people killed every prophet. Every prophet they could get their hands on, they would kill him. So, what do you think they're going to do anytime there's a preacher called of y'all come? Them rebel ones. See, there were people, small group, that did obey, that did hearken to the voice, and did follow, but then there was a big larger group that had the influence and stuff that they were ready to kill all the mouthpieces of y'all. You think that's changed? That ain't changed none. Not one bit. Luke 21, 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all heathen, pagan, ethnos, 
Goy. I'm mixing Hebrew and Greek. Nations. And Jerusalem, they're going to be led away captive into all non-Hebrew nations. That makes sense, don't it? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the heathens. Who's in Jerusalem now? The heathens. The Goyims. The Ephraims. Until the times be fulfilled. Good study, wasn't it? Learn anything? Y'all not disheartened, are you? Should have learned something. Hallelujah. Should have learned something. I keep telling you, people don't know what they're talking about. They have no idea what they're talking about whatsoever at all. Hope y'all did enjoy that, though. Hallelujah. Be glad when the king come. See, if I didn't stick with just Gentile like that, I could have went off in uh, all these different digressions and stuff. Oh, boy. And that's why people are confused today because they don't know what the word is saying. They misappropriate the word. Somebody got to do it. You got to have liars, don't you? You got to have false brethren. The book warned us against false brethren. They got to be here. Why is there any surprise to you when they come? Am I making any sense, Israel? You're going to have these things. Don't, don't sit up there and, and have your bottom lip hit the ground and wonder why I, oh God, I, I just, I can't believe it. They're here. Now think about it. These, do you think the scribes and Pharisees believed that Christ was the Messiah? No. They thought he was an imposter. And they wanted to kill him for blaspheming. Because they didn't believe it. Now we got a non-Hebrew. The whole world is duped by him. Because the power of Christianity has been behind them. Or let's say the power of the heathen, non-Hebrew people has been behind them. And now we got a heathen, non-Hebrew people that has no direct connection or any link to Abraham whatsoever at all. Posing themselves in the whole entire world as they are Yah's chosen people. I told you, when the world really truly, if they can accept and they're not going to do it, who Yah's chosen people is, then guess what? They got to start sending me $11 billion in age every year. And they ain't about to do that. And then everyone is part of my nation. Do y'all think we could use $11 billion? Hmm? Would that wake you up out of slumber? That's a good question. Isn't that a good question? I mean, the word says that much is given, much is required. Not more leisure and idleness of time. Oh. Did I say something wrong? There we go. He see, he was doing good until he stopped picking on us again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us stand. Hallelujah. I'll be with you. Thank you for all things. Pray to sin, sink deep down in our hearts that the teacher continue to go forth in power and strength and magnificent name of Yahshua. Amen. King coming. Uh-oh. Look at him looking.